It's a really hard job. We are the meals. It's hell. It's hell here. People work hard here. We women do really a grueling job. Today we won one euro and 50 cents. This is where I will die. It's been 20 days without fish. All I want is for my children to have a better life. It's unbelievable, but Mirako and his brother still find something to eat out of the mud. At the center, the mud is still liquid to enable thousands of catfishes to survive. Catfishes are so many that you can't count. <laughs> We do this to make money for our kids. If you don't get in the lake, you won't eat anything. You have to work to eat. It's a struggle between the fishes and us. It is hard labor that God gave us. It's exhausting. Using this spear, is tiring. My shoulders hurt. And I feel really cold in the mud. At the moment, my whole body is numb. I am hungry, I am thirsty, it's wearing me out. But for this cow, there is still a little bit of hope. Mareko will try to save it. He lost several of them in the mud. When we're not watching them, our animals are leaving in every sense. What are we going to become in life? Will we have more cows? Go, pull, pull. Stop! She's still alive. She will get up. A miracle. The little hands that worked in the plantations toiled the ground in search of the scene that will get them out of misery. When going down I catch the picket and I check if it's solid. You have to make sure that they are solid. You put your leg on and go down. Fifteen meters down, the risk is there. But it doesn't matter. If you should choose between starving while growing cocoa or get rich by facing danger, the choice is quickly made for a man like Romeric. That's the form work. It can collapse at any moment, and we can all die. The first step is to remove all the mud to find the rock. Gold is enclosed in these rocks. 
the ones that contain the most are even more profound. Around 20 meters. Do you find a lot of gold here? Not enough. We find a few, but not much. There are few, but it's still enough to make you dream about it. Romeric refuses to work all his life on the family plantation. I used to be a student. My parents couldn't afford to pay for my studies. When I stopped studying, there was no work. I had to come here. Ivory Coast is an emerging country, but the youths are suffering. My dream is to find a gold mine, earn money, and return to my village. Then to build a beautiful family, to put my children to school, and live in the land of my ancestors. This is where I was born. This is where I want to die. On the surface, the pebbles are ground, then seeded. I am six years old. I work here to pay myself my classroom supplies. It's hell. It's hell here. We work hard. But we harvest less. It's barely enough for feeding. We, the women, really carry out a grueling job. Here, the most difficult tasks are done by women. We walked in the mountains for one hour and a half to get here. Now I am preparing my load to return to the village. We'll need another one hour and a half walk. We cut grass during the summer and the rest of the year. We come every day to carry some. Each pack weighs between 20 and 30 kilos. If despite my age, I keep working this hard, it's for a one reason. It's so my children can choose to have a better life. A ridiculous tightrope walker whose life hangs by a thread. A strong gust of wind. And the bridge can be turned around. To avoid too many catches in the wind, out of two, men put down only one baton. Beware of the stunt.
They took five hours to get to the village and return. To pull up clams, I have to stay in water for three minutes. I'm in charge of shelves then fruits and vegetables, fish and butchery, you need to be everywhere. It's part of our job. Back pain is present. We then put the clams on fire and boil them. It's really a crazy job. And we're still at the bottom. Look there, look! No, no, no. Thousands of bats are on the arch. Bats and Solji do not drive them away. They are precious. It's thanks to their feces that they earn a living. The problem is when they poop on you. It is really not very funny. But we got used to it eventually, it's like a grain of sand that falls on you. It's a bit cold and wet. Flying mammals have been defecating in the cave for hundreds of years. And their excrement is a good fertilizer. It is a good fertilizer for cabbages, tomatoes, bell peppers, it's really good. There are no chemicals, it's natural. When he digs, bats is never very reassured. I am not afraid of bats. I just don't want to get bitten. It can be serious. My doctor said it can poison your body, so to stop them from approaching you. You can get rabies you know reason why I keep the light close, this way, the bats stay away. Deep inside the cave, we have no oxygen, we hardly breathe. Sometimes I have to stop and go out for 30 minutes, to take a breath of fresh air. I don't want to faint in this hole. I rather fear snake attacks. Some are aggressive, vicious. I've been doing this since I was 21. I didn't start yesterday. I'm 55 today. I've been working in this cave for 34 years. I don't want my children to do this job. It will be too hard for them. I say that wholeheartedly. All I want is for my children to have a better life. They sell this bag of soil for 10 euros. That's a lot of money in Jamaica, where the average wage does not exceed 350 euros.
Abu is a victim from reckless driving. He was hit by a car in his youth. The idea of begging was unbearable for him. So, despite his paralyzed leg, he gave himself a mission. One day I told my brother's dad, the roads in this state give way for a lot of accidents. So, to remedy this, I told myself that I should try to help our brothers. That's why I'm committed to it. Tirelessly, one after the other, he covered all the potholes. I am present every day. And there is over 70 kilometers. Thanks to those who feel sorry for me. Daily, I can earn 1,500 or 2,000 francs. Given my situation, I can't say that it's not much. But I have a wife and two kids. I am very tired. His courage saves lives. Thanks to him, there are no more holes. Trucks. Cars and motorcycles stopped by all day long to thank him for maintaining the road. On the road, kids try to earn some money to eat by fixing the broken track. Hey! Come here. It's for the three of you, okay? You are the eldest. You split it well into three, yourself, him and the other one. Thank you, sir. Share the money among three of you, okay? They fixed the road well. They did a great job. Today, we won one euro and 50 cents. I stopped school after grade one because my family is poor. I came here to work in the garage. I want to learn the profession. I want to know everything and become like our boss. The garage owner employs seven children and three teens, whom he pays as he sees fit. It's not easy to earn money. I earn between 8 euros and 20 euros per day. If I win much, I give them much. If I earn little, I give them little. Because I also take care of my mother, my wife, and my son. That's how I get out the salt from the ground. I cut pieces out of the ground. I take the plate out of the salted water. I clean it up and then I sell it to wafer cutters.
Salt workers earn two euros per day. Barely enough to survive. I am the oldest. I've been doing this for 18 years. I have six children to feed and for that, I work every day in the desert. Here, you pay for food and housing. In fact, you pay for everything, including your whole family. So, I can't stop working. Some days, the temperature. The only problem is that there is no shade. It's very hot. The sun is burning us. And salt hurts our eyes, our hands, and feet. Everyone refreshes before starting the three-day return walk. With my 30 camels, I am carrying 200 kilos of salt. I'm going to walk for three nights to go and sell it in town. These tireless workers, equipped with trivial tools, are hundreds to get exhausted on the roads for five euros per day, without any protection. It's a very tiring job. I've been on construction sites for three years. For that, I have to get up very early. We break rocks for road maintenance. We have to buy everything, even our food. Workers return to India every six months. In the meantime, they live in these makeshift shacks. Look, this is where we sleep. We sleep ten in the same room. We are 14 in total. The others are asleep next door. Life is very difficult here. The boss demands a lot of work from us. The issues is the torrential rains. There are rats everywhere, and if you want to buy meat, there is none. We have to survive every day with potatoes and eggplants. to cope against a future disaster. The village is getting stronger by erecting dikes. Everywhere else, it's the mules that carry the loads. But here in Limi, we're the mules. Everyone lives in the same place, the young as well as old. Even the mayor gives a helping hand. He could watch us work. But it's not like that here. We are a community. Everyone is requisitioned because state aid is very low. We will not abandon our village. 
Landslides and the floods take away our houses and the land where we farm. We were born here. We cannot go away. A lot of people ask us why we live in such a risky place. Why not go elsewhere? We will stay here. It is impossible for us to leave the land of our ancestors. They are the only ones accepted by the people of the night. Hyenas. At the beginning, when I used to see hyenas, I was scared. I would run away. The hyena is very strong. You don't stand a chance if she bites you. A single hyena has the strength of seven horsepower. Fortunately, we can know when they feel threatened. They send out strange screams. I feed them every night, otherwise they will remain wild. Since the 19th century, a pact unites the hyenas to the inhabitants. Like his father, Malajita has been bringing them food every night for 26 years. There is absolute trust. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Take a look at this hole. There are several babies. As soon as they hear noise, they immediately go into hiding. Look, there's the mother. From time to time, Malajita makes some money by reselling baby hyenas to some zoos. I will never stop feeding hyenas. I will do this job till I die. I am in charge of cow safety. If thieves come to steal them, I'll shoot them immediately. Milk is too precious for us. We can't afford to lose a cow. How much does it cost? It can be worth between 400 and 500 euros. We are here to defend them till death if necessary. It's the only time I'll leave them. Among the Mandari people, the number and beauty of cattle determines the wealth of a clan, the social status of a man, and the prestige of an entire family. Do you bath like that every morning? Mm. Yes, every day. I easily spot a cow who is about to urinate when it is lying down and wakes up. 
It means it is about to urinate. Is it really good for you? Yes, it strengthens my hair. It also removes the dye. But urine is mainly used as an antiseptic to disinfect the skin. You stay there, fat cow. He really looks like a cow, for real. I don't always call him Fetard, just when they ask for his first name, otherwise it's Titi, man, old man. Then the fat cow too, since it's big. Come on, man. Antoine's dream with Fetard is to win the title of the most heavy bull in the world at the agricultural show. That is the objective. Beat the world record. Stop growling, you'll make him mad, he'll get hurt. Calm down. Come on. You're hurting yourself. That's it. But the other one is afraid. You need to untie it, he is afraid of the other guy, he wants to leave because he is afraid. I don't want him to get hurt. Come on, Lulu. Come on, man. Come forward again. Nineteen fifty. This is great. Why? It's the heaviest in the world. It's delicate with this cart. If it falls off, I'll lose the harvest. The leaves may fall off. You have to go carefully. Indeed. The most famous cigars are made with five whole sheets of tobacco. They shouldn't be torn. The weather is bad. It's going to rain. The tobacco must be protected. If the tobacco gets wet, it's a problem. It loses its quality. I could cover them up, but I don't have a tarp. Here is one of our pride. We're happy to have it and our customers like it as well. Then it adds folklore too. It's been two years since we took it out. We are really happy to get it out at last. Him as much as we do. 8.05 a.m. will be open in 25 minutes. Everyone will see it. It's nice. It's good. If this doesn't show the Basque country, then I don't know where we are. $27.10. Hey Chucho, I'm bringing you cheese. That's very good. Put them over here. In El Viento, money is not within everyone's reach. The few that people earn loses its value daily because of hyperinflation. Clearly, money is no longer worth anything. So, Chucho handed over the barter of today. Peasants bring some cheese or coffee and I exchange them for groceries. That's how I get paid. 
Money isn't known here. Our government did all wrong. The national currency is no longer in circulation. In a week, the price of a kilo of potatoes can be multiplied by four, maybe ten. It's been ten years now that we are living in crisis. It just got worse. People get used to surviving this way, but it's still very difficult. Hello. God bless you. These are my three daughters. When Chicho goes to town to sell his cheese, Florena, the eldest, who stands behind the cash register. Because I don't want them to lack anything, I make sacrifices for my goals. I risk my life on the field. They mean more than anything to me. Lorena is never reassured to see her father leave. But Chucho has no choice. In 15 days, he has already exchanged 700 kilos of cheese. You have to sell them before they get bad. Goodbye. Have a good trip. I love you very much. Like almost every time, the second car from the village accompanies him. Nobody drives alone on this road. This road is very complicated to pass by. It's a real mess. It looks like a trail for mules. This rock is very solid. He never let go of me. It is firmly attached to the cliff. It's not shaking. He's as strong as a bull. Strong as an elephant. Sixty meters down. Without any security. Or maybe there is. A little warm up. I am doing this to add more strength in my arms. Is this rope strong enough? Yes. How old is it? It's 10 years old. Listen to the sea waves. It is such a great sound. Above all, it says, don't go away, stay, you'll make a great catch. Chikoka is probably the only mountaineer fisherman in the world. Three people died here. They gave up, they had cramps. They didn't warm up like I did before going down. So why does he take these risks? Actually, this place is a natural resort. Fish is plentiful. Net fishing is prohibited. Only the line is allowed. Chikoka, therefore, has no competition, or almost none. Averagely, the fisherman goes back with about 20 kilos of fish per day. But today, no fish is biting. Sea lions have chased away part of the fish, and the swell did the rest. 
The fish went offshore. The sea waves are too strong. There is nothing to catch. At 66 years old, exercising becomes tedious. Chikoka spends several weeks in the desert. The man does not have the means to waste gas going back home every night. 35 kilometers away. I am resting against tomorrow. Tomorrow, I need to go fishing again. These are cockerel feather baits. I make them. It's been 20 days with no fish, I'm going to stay 30 more days before returning, to be able to bring back fish for my family. That's the life of a fisherman. That's an old combination for oil workers. It's easy to find. We exchange it for fish. It's the only thing left of the company. Its name. I made these oars with two paint can covers. I burst the plastic and screwed them to the stick. Today, I am not earning enough to be able to use my engine or to buy a better boat. Jose has no gas, but he has ideas. It's like going centuries back. They sailed like that in the time of the pirates. There are fewer fishes every day. We used to be great at fishing, but now it gets over. You have to go far away and work very hard to catch a few fish. I was born and raised on this lake. My children were born here. They're growing up here, and I'll die here. Oil spills started six or seven years ago, and the government is doing nothing to appease it. It doesn't look like the lake of my childhood anymore. Mine was clean and free from pollution. I could never imagine that my kids would go through this one day. Waste pickers are all over a part of the city. Everything they've gotten from the trash cans, they sell it here. They bring back to life what was broken. Every piece of metal becomes a useful object. Here, no one can afford a steel cutting machine. Everything is handmade. With trust. Nobody has a choice. This trade helps us to feed the entire family. We all know each other here. We are like a big family. And we all depend on these odd jobs. We pass knowledge to each other, from generation to generation. These artists make shovels out of recycled metal. How much does it cost to make a barbecue with that? Give me one for one euro. We'll resell it for two euros. We are many in this market selling this kind of brazier. But we still manage to do great deals.
When I work well, I can do 15 a day. I work with anything made of metal. I make chimneys, exhaust pipes, and gutters. It's my job, it feeds me well. In a store, this brazier would cost a lot more. In 20 minutes, the two computer plates have become a mini barbecue. Are we not lucky? No noise. No honk. Nobody to annoy us. This feels like paradise. With a weather like this, today feels like paradise.